good morning friends let's explore more about the second uh, tab here in the uh, spark contest web ui which is stages we launched it by localhost 4040 port and our program is running here which is waiting for an input that's why the main program has not exited yet so let's look at the stages so we can navigate to the stages um, directly by going by clicking the stages here or we can also go in the jobs here and when we click here as reduce it will also like open uh, the stages here if i just print it from here complete the stages i point it here so it will launch me for that particular task the stages tab or in simple words i will just go back here again and just click on stages tab here it will again give me the same thing but it would be for all the jobs all the four jobs uh, that that we have run in our program the stages tab displays a summary page that shows the current state of all stages of all Spark jobs. We've got four Spark jobs here in the Spark application. The number of tasks that we see here, right? There are like four tasks total and succeeded. So the number of tasks we, we could see in each of these stage is the number of partitions that Spark is going to work on because I'm running on my local machine in the local mode, standalone mode, and I have got four CPU cores. That's why the number of partitions for my RDDs are four. That's why the number of tasks also shown here is four. And the duration is also given here that how much time it took uh, to run each of these jobs or each of this action. So this is what it means by uh, four and by four. So for each, each of them are uh, like our stages, our stage, and each of the stage has got four tasks because there are four number of partitions or four number of CPU cores. That's why it is four. And it has shown me the all the, the time has been taken, what is the submitted time and how many of them have succeeded. Now let's click on one of the description page where it will give me the more details about each of the stage. Let me click on maybe uh, count first. Okay, so it's loading now. Now here we see the first thing is about uh, just for this stage, stage zero, where we call this count method. Uh, we have got the profile ID and all of the things that how much the time it took. The most important thing is about the DAG visualization. Now DAG is directed acyclic graph. So directed acyclic graphs of this stage where vertices represents the RDDs. So we have got this RDD like here because uh, once we uh, once we call this parallelized method, it will actually create a, a parallelized a parallel collection RDD, but it will be transformed because we are using Java here. It will actually create a Java RDD uh, in terms of Java. But this is the actual parallel collection RDD which is created here by parallelized method, and it also gives the exact line where it is called. So here we are calling it at line 22, as we can see. That's why it is being shown here. So parallelize is, is the method which is named. That's why in the in this block, it is shown as this parallelize, which is a vertex. And if there is any, we will uh, see that once we have got uh, white transformation, there would be more of the more of the graph nodes and each would be connected with a, with a directed graph, with, with a direction and that how uh, the flow was going. That will show because this is a very simple program with only like one um, parallelize method call on a very small data set. That's why it's only like one vertex here, one node we can see here. And once we go down, it will miss. Uh, it we can monitor a lot of things. Like we can see, we can check on all of, all of these, and it will show us additional matrices like scheduled, delay, tasks, time, and all. We can do a lot of monitoring from this page for each of the stages or each of the task. And it will also show me because there are four completed tasks in this stage. Only we are only looking for the count right now, and it will also show me uh, for each of the four completed tasks because we have got four partitions. It's showing me a lot of other details that how much duration it was done, what is the GC time and all, because there was no GC collected here, so it's by showing a zero. And because we know that for each of the node, all the four partitions or the worker nodes, we have got an executor running and uh, running our program. It will also give me the details about the executor. And it is showing it's as an aggregated form. So as shown here, we can do a lot of monitoring from this stage, uh, from the stage tab. And this is one of the way that um, for very complex Spark operations, like uh, it is just a very simple uh, data set example here. But for more complex one, this this page is very useful to give the whole summary of all the stages and all the tasks inside it. 
and how much uh, gc time or whatever um, duration and all uh, it has taken which is very good to debug it now let's go to the storage tab the storage tab displays the persisted rdts and data frames if any in the application the summary page shows the storage levels sizes and partitions of all rdts and the details page show the sizes and using executors for all partitions in an rdd or data frame but here you can see that it's all blank right so what it means is that because there is no uh, persisted rdds or data frames that data frames we have we are not using right now we will do when we will cover sparse sql but here we we are not persisting anything and we are persist uh, persisting means that we are persisting on a disk or something then we will get some more details here because this place is blank and we have got a very small rdd and it's all persisted in memory so that's why it is not being nothing is shown here so let's go to the environment variable now environment tab sorry now environment tab uh, displays the values for the different environment and configuration variables including jvm spark and system properties it is a very useful place to check whether our spark application properties have been set correctly and this environment uh, tab has six parts so if i just uh, so we can see that one two three four five six parts are there so for each of them for example runtime information we can see the java world the home version and scala version this is for runtime information for the spark properties which is actually for the what we are running as a program so it will give lot of details here but like for example what is the app name what is the start time in the epoch long and all those extra java options that has been used so if you want to go dig into details that what was the java uh, option that were being used it was shown here the driver host and port this is the local host um, and the port where it is running and uh, also uh, it has got executor id master because we are using local star master here that's why it's showing this and the scheduler mode as fifo because it's a standalone mode now if i expand so these are the like uh, not very exhaustive but if i just open this okay the, this uh, this is also like uh, quite straight forward it will give me the details about the executors that and how much that the time was required or the cpu was used for example all these details in this resource profiles so resource profiles uh, give details about executor and task cpu and memory usages after this if we click on this hadoop properties the, so hadoop properties displays very detailed properties related to hadoop hdfs and yarn as you can see that is a very huge uh, set of uh, exhaustive set of configurations for the file system or the uh, hadoop or uh, yarn cluster manager that we are using we are using the local cluster mode so that's why it is showing us local connection mode but you can go through the very huge uh, details about uh, all these uh, if you are interested i mean you can see all this very detailed information about the cluster manager that we are using okay so this was about hadoop properties now again if i click check on system properties so system properties will show more details about the jvm this is all about jvm that we, that is local to my machine so i am using jdk 11 and this what is the temp directory and all java version encoding and all and all these are the options that are being used so this system properties is more about the java version which is being used for running our spark program and finally we go to the class path entries so class path entries would be all those like the the jars and the libraries that we have loaded in our application so here we can see that if i go to external libraries there's a there are a lot of libraries that we are using so all of this information is also shown here in this class path entries and all of these are actually added in the system class path so guys this was all about executor tab we covered we covered a lot of information here in the next video, we will see the executor tab. So see you all in the next video.